Do you find it overwhelming to draw every carbon and hydrogen and bond when drawing organic molecules? In this video, we're going to simplify the process and learn how to draw skeletal structures for organic molecules. Skeletal structures give you a simple way to quickly represent organic molecules. Organic compounds are molecules that have carbon and hydrogen, but they can also have other atoms like oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and even phosphorus. Why do organic molecules have carbon? Carbon, in its hybridized state as an sp3 molecule, has four valence electrons capable of forming up to four different bonds. If an atom can bind four different things, and say one of those things is another carbon, and that carbon can bind three more atoms, and that can bind more atoms and more atoms, you go from something really simple to something big and complex that can ultimately support life. But when you want to draw these molecules, that's where it helps to know how to do it simply. Let's start with something simple. For example, a molecule like butane, which is C4H10. We have many ways to represent it. For example, the condensed structural formula, which gives us the different groups in that molecule. So we have a CH3 bound to a CH2, another CH2 and CH3. If we want more information about how the atoms are bound, we can use a Lewis structure. A Lewis structure gives us a little more information because we actually see exactly how the atoms are bound to each other. These are all very helpful, except that it takes a really long time to draw it and we're only looking at a four carbon chain. Now imagine if you had to draw the same thing for a molecule like octane, which is eight carbons long, or decane, which is 10 carbons long. Don't worry about the naming for now because I cover that in a separate video series, layoffersci.com slash naming. If I want to draw these molecules, octane is eight, it would take twice as long to draw as butane, and decane at 10 carbons would take even longer. Now imagine you're doing a mechanism and you have to draw a version of the molecule once and again and again and again. Not only is it gonna take so much time, can you imagine how messy your paper is going to be? And you're under enough pressure as it is with your exams, so you need a simpler and easier way. And that's why we have skeletal structures, so we can quickly and easily represent these molecules and still know exactly what's going on. The trick with skeletal structure is that we want to make this as simple as possible. And that means we're going to assume rather than show a lot of what is going on. You don't show any hydrogen atoms that are on carbon. You only show the bonds between the atoms, again, unless it's carbon to hydrogen, which we don't show. The only atoms you show are the non-carbon and hydrogen atoms, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, and so on. So how does this work? If we have a molecule like butane, we're not going to show the carbon atoms, but we're going to show the bonds between carbon atoms. That means we have one, two, three, and four, four carbon atoms and three bonds between them. We're not going to show any hydrogens. We're going to simply assume that they're there. And so you put pen to paper and draw a line. This line represents a bond between two carbon atoms, unless something else is shown. And then we draw another line and another line. The problem is that a lot of students count it when they draw a line rather than the first atom you write. So they draw a line and call that carbon one, two, and three, but that is incorrect. When you're drawing it, remember you have fewer bonds than you have atoms. Four carbons have three bonds between them. And the trick to recognize is that every corner, every angle, every bend represents another hidden carbon atom. So with that same structure, even though we only have three lines, we have a total of one, two, three, four carbon atoms. I'm showing you the dots to help you count them, but I caution you not to get used to it. It is a crutch that wastes time, and even though you think it's easier now, you're going to be hurting yourself down the line. Imagine that those dots are there, and instead of drawing them, number it. So we have one, two, three, and four. That's a four carbon chain. What about hydrogen atoms? Honestly, we don't care. They're there, but we don't need to show them. If your professor asks you how many hydrogens you have, or you're trying to figure it out for the molecular formula, use this trick. Knowing that a carbon atom has a total of four bonds, 
we take the number 4 and then we subtract the number of visible bonds. Visible bonds means it's not connected to hydrogen and whatever is missing is a hidden hydrogen atom. If we look at carbon number 1, we see one bond to carbon number 2. 4 minus 1 is 3, that right there would be our three hydrogen atoms. Carbon number 2 has a bond to 1 and a bond to 3. That's two bonds, 4 minus 2 is 2, and we have two invisible hydrogen atoms. And again for 3, 4 has three more. I'm showing this to you so you understand that it's there, but I want you to forget get the hydrogens and simply focus on the skeleton at hand. Let's try another example, in this case looking at pentane given a molecular formula. First thing we do is count the number of carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five. Now we need a skeleton to represent these five carbons and only the five carbons. When you first touch pen to paper, that is your first carbon, so that'll be one, two, three, four, five. Always, always number, especially when you're just starting out, to make sure you didn't make a mistake. One, two, three, four, five, and we are good to go. If by mistake you drew something like this, one, two, three, four, five, notice you didn't count when you put your pen down, but instead you drew the first line and then counted one, you will catch this mistake when you number it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll realize that's not what I was looking for. That's why you always want to double check your work and put the numbers to see what's going on as a beginner or go student and even when doing advanced mechanisms in organic chemistry too. What about the hidden hydrogen atoms? We don't care. We know they're there. We're not asked about it, so we're not worrying about it. Let's take a minute to break it down and understand why we're drawing it like this. Remember that carbon is our central atom. And when sp3 hybridized, carbon will have a bond angle of 109.5 and a shape that is tetrahedral. There are many different ways to draw this in three dimensions. Here's the format that I prefer. If we have a carbon atom with two bonds in the plane of the page, a line means it's not coming out or going into the page, but instead it's flat, parallel to the page. The other two will have to be in the opposite dimensions. One will come straight forward and the other will go back. Remember that wedge means it's getting bolder and bigger and coming out at you. The dash is it's fading away into the distance into the page. If we go back to our example of pentane, we can imagine that this carbon is one of the five in the chain. Here we have another one. And again, two bonds in the plane of the page, one coming forward, one going back. We could do this for all five carbons. These are the five carbons of the molecule. That means the missing bonds have to be hydrogen atoms. Hydrogens are typically invisible in line structure, but we're showing them here to complete the molecule. Notice that when we have the carbons at 109.5, it's kind of difficult to show that on paper, so we settle for approximately 120 degree bond angle. The hydrogens are going in and out of the page, but to keep it simple, we specifically chose all the atoms in the plane of the page to represent the carbon bonds, and anything going forward or back to be the hydrogens, because they're difficult to draw, and we don't want to draw them anyway. This gives us the zigzag structure that you're going to see when drawing skeletal structure. To simplify this, we simply start with the first carbon and draw a zigzag to represent that same molecule faster, easier, and so much less confusing. But don't forget, when you have a sigma bond that's a single bond, there's free rotation about the bond. This gives me a different way to represent the molecule. And when that rotates, this group, which is attached to the carbon that's turning, will swing around and ultimately go towards the top of the molecule. To represent that aligned structure, I start with everything that hasn't moved, and then the group that moved upward, I simply draw that upward. If I count this, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, you'll recognize that it's the same exact molecule, just drawn a different way. In fact, if you're not sure, use the highlighter trick. If you can put your highlighter down and then keep it down as you trace a path through the entire molecule, you know that it's one continuous chain. And in this structure, even though it looks different, I can trace that same path, one through five, so I know it's the same exact thing. Let's look at an even more complex structure, cyclohexane.
in watching me draw this? Did you get a little bit of a sense of panic? If so, let me know in the comments below. I find it tedious, and I bet you find it tedious as well. If I had to draw this on the exam, I would lose my mind. Not to mention it would be messy and waste a whole lot of time. So what do we do? We number it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six carbons attached to hydrogen. Let's do the same thing in skeletal structure. Let's show where the carbons are going to be. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a helpful trick to get an idea of where to draw the atoms when you're still learning how to do skeletal structure. One, two, three, four, five, six. But don't forget, because this molecule is a cyclic compound, a ring, we have to connect six back to one. Isn't that so much faster and so much easier? Later in the course, you're going to learn yet another way to draw cyclohexane as chair conformations, which is something I cover in the tutorial link below. If your molecule contains sp2 hybridized carbons, you're likely going to see a double bond. For example, let's take a look at trans-2-butene. This molecule has four carbons. But the two carbons in the middle have a second bond between them. That's a pi bond or a double bond. sp2 hybridized carbons have a bond angle of 120 degrees, which is much easier to represent in two dimensions. To draw this in skeletal structure, we do the same thing as with sp3 hybridized carbons. Start by figuring out how many carbons you need in your chain. In this case, we have a total of four. So we draw a zigzag of four carbons, one, two, three, four. If you're not confident, just add the dots and count them or number accordingly. And then, to show that double bond, well, we simply show a double bond by drawing a second line or that second bond between carbons 2 and 3. Triple bonds is where it gets tricky. A triple bond has an sp hybridized atom with a 180 degree bond angle. The geometry for an sp hybridized atom is linear. And this can get really confusing. Let's take a look at 2-butyne. Once again, we have four carbon atoms attached in a row. But this time, the two central carbons have three bonds between them, one sigma and two pi. One of my pet peeves is to see this drawn as an sp2 or sp3 molecule with simply two extra pi bonds as a triple. This is absolutely incorrect. Remember. 180 degrees gives us a linear molecule. It should be a straight line, not a zigzag, especially at those sp hybridized carbons. When you do this aligned structure, it's counterintuitive because the molecule is simply a line. So how do you know where the carbons start and end? Let's not forget our triple bond. We have first pi and second pi. This is the proper way to draw a triple bond in line or skeletal structure, but I understand that it can get confusing. As you're just starting out, draw a little dot to remind you that there's an extra carbon atom sitting on either side of the triple bond before the start and end of the molecule. That means we have one, two, three, four carbons total. For even more examples, make sure you try the skeletal structure practice quiz linked in the description. Let's look at an example of working backwards, where you're given a skeletal structure of a molecule and asked to turn it into a molecular formula, a Lewis structure, or any other format where you have to show all the atoms. The first thing you want to do is understand what you're looking at. And my first step, if I need to know what's going on, is to number it. Since we're not naming it, it doesn't matter how you number it, right to left or left to right. It's simply about understanding what's going on. I see a total of five carbons, so I will draw a structure that has five carbons. And then I'll number it so I know what's what when I'm comparing between the skeletal and the Lewis. On carbon two and carbon three, I see a line coming out with nothing on it, so I know that's a carbon atom with invisible hydrogens. So we'll draw one coming up on carbon two and one coming down on carbon three. Now we have to fill in the hydrogen atoms. Remember the formula. Four minus the number of visible bonds is equal to your hydrogen atoms. Carbon 1 has one visible bond. That means 4 minus 1 equals 3 hydrogen atoms. Carbon 2 has three visible bonds. That's one hydrogen atom. 
The purple carbon up top has one visible or three hydrogens, same with this one. Carbon three has three visible, one hydrogen. Four has two visible, two hydrogen. And five has one visible, therefore three more hydrogen. If you want to verify, quickly count the total number of bonds on each carbon atom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and so on to verify that it's correct. If you're asked to condense this even more, just count your groups and then draw them out. But instead of writing bonds, take every group as carbon followed by the attached hydrogen. So for example, we're starting with a C-bound of three hydrogens. That's a CH3. The next carbon is a CH2. The next carbon is a CH, but it also has a CH3 coming off it. So that would be a CH, parentheses, CH3, showing that the CH3 is a substituent of that carbon. Same thing for the next one, CH bound to CH3. And finally, a CH3 at the end of the molecule. Till now, we looked at skeletal structures with just carbon and hydrogen. But what happens if you have another atom, like oxygen or nitrogen? For example, how do you draw the skeletal structure for a molecule like ethanol? Ethanol is CH3, CH2OH. If you see the carbon, you start the same way. What does my carbon chain have? One, two. So I draw a line that represents one carbon bound to a second one, and it definitely helps if you can number it. The hydrogens, when bound to carbon, are invisible. Oxygen is not invisible, so we have to draw a bond from the skeleton of carbon to the hetero atom that it's attached to, meaning non-carbon or hydrogen. In this case, I drew an oxygen. And because oxygen has a hydrogen that is not bound to carbon, we have to show that hydrogen atom. So what do we have here? Two carbon atoms and then a bond going to oxygen and hydrogen. This is where students tend to make a mistake. They count this and they say, oh, that's one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. That is not a third carbon atom. If that line terminates in nothing, meaning the line ends, that's a carbon atom. If the line terminates and there's another atom visible, it's not an imaginary carbon, it's not a self-understood carbon, it's a very, very non-imaginary visible atom, in this case, oxygen. Let's look at another one. Say we're given butanamide, which is CH3, CH2, CH2, C double bound O, and NH2. We treat this the same exact way. It doesn't matter what is on that carbon atom, Count your carbon atoms and start there. We have one, two, three, four. So we draw a skeleton, one, two, three, four. Number it to make sure all your atoms are accounted for. Forget your hydrogens unless they're not sitting on carbon and then add in everything else. We have a double bond between carbon and oxygen. So from that imaginary carbon at the end of the line, we draw a double bond and add oxygen because it's not imaginary. We have to show that. Same thing for nitrogen, but it's only a single bond. Nitrogen has two hydrogen atoms. That means they're hydrogens not sitting on carbon. So we draw them in as one and two. For even more practice, going from molecules in any form to skeletal structure, or taking that skeleton and converting it back, be sure to try the practice quiz on my website, layerforsci.com slash skeletal, or visit the link in the description.